Hello, I'm Daniel Gonzalez, and I'll be painting Special Agent Seely Booth. You can see my basic setup here. I'm using a 12 by 12 wood panel to draw on. I already gessoed it with clear gesso, and I'm using just a regular graphite pencil, being really careful to place everything correctly and measure it right. When working on a commissioned project, sometimes the reference photo is not that great. This one was actually pretty good. It was a little pixelated, but I was able to print it out big enough to reference. Generally speaking, it's a good idea to block in all the darks first, and you'll see me do that here. And later you'll see me render in the shadow areas with some warm colors. But I was pretty careful not to over render because I wanted the viewer's eye to travel all around the painting. You can see right above the lip, I made a little mistake where I muddied up some light color and it came out just a muddy mess, but um, I scraped that away later and amend it. Here you'll see me blocking in some of the still dark values, but a little bit of the warmer dark values, um, yellow ochre and Venetian red and Indian red, just really trying to make the form of the fur have some depth. As I block it in still, I'm sure to paint with the contour of the form. As I paint, I'm still using the dark side of my palette. I haven't even gone into really even the medium range of the values. I'm still in the darker range, except for right there on the leg that I just painted. I wanted to see what one of the highlights will look like. Even then, that's not the highlight. I'm still working towards um, one highlight in particular on the cheek right below the eye. The area right below the eye, that'll be probably the brightest on the dog, and except for the nose, but then that's a different temperature highlight. You can see I just wiped away the lip area where I messed up. Again, I'm stacking values. This is uh, wet on wet. I'm not letting it dry, really. I am stacking the values on top of one another. Here you'll see me block in the background, and I wanted the area above the head to be a little lighter. And in general, I wanted to incorporate something from the reference photo, which was the grass that Booth was lying in. I wanted to use that. I liked how cool it was because Booth is so warm with all the gold and the rose colors of the fur. I thought it would be a nice compliment and a nice balance. The way I'm painting the background is a lot thinner than the way I'm painting Booth. When I was painting with fur, you saw me laying the dark colors first and then the medium colors, and then on top of that, the lighter colors. And I'm literally stacking wet paint on top of itself, and I really love the texture and the effect I get with the brushes. One of the things I like about painting this way is amending the edges of my color shapes. And there, the hindquarters, I'm making sure to keep a little soft so that they look like they're in the distance and the vignetting is another way to handle the edges. One of the things, even with a uh, small portrait like this, that you want to do is keep in mind atmosphere and how you want to suggest atmosphere to the viewer. And you do that with different values and different edges. And I just love painting dogs. <laughs> when I was painting this dog's mouth, I. Uh, really got into it and started to see a lot of the character come to life with the nose and the eye. It was interesting as I painted the lighter colors and the highlights on Booth. It was as if Booth was aging before me, becoming wiser and older. And it's just interesting how that happens. Here you'll see me render in a little bit of the shadows with some warm pinks. I really like the look that Booth has right here with the eye and the nose and the, just what a beautiful dog. And dogs have a special place in my heart as many of you who also have dogs in your life know. Growing up on a ranch I was amazed at how well they worked together and all the different personalities that would come out and just how loyal they are. Man gosh like I would go running you know into town and I live like 15 miles out of town and my dog Pirate would just stay with me the whole time. He once saved me from an emu 
of all things, which was crazy. I was running in the desert and this emu started chasing me and my dog Pirate like charged it and barked it away, which is, <laughs> I'll never forget. I bet the family has a lot of interesting stories about Booth and I know this painting will have a good home with them. Hopefully it'll remind them um, about the special place in their heart that Booth had. I know the portraits I did of my dog, um, Plata. Whenever I look at them, they remind me of all the good times we had together. Here I'm painting in a bunch of the little details, little whiskers and little hairs on the snout. When I paint the whiskers, um, one of the things I did differently is I scratched a little groove for the paint to lay in. I scratched it with a palette knife and then laid it in very finely with a paintbrush. Doing that where I scratched in the whiskers um, and then painted in that little groove actually worked pretty well. Sometimes when you paint a thin line, it'll actually, um, the bristles will push the paint to either side, especially on a panel like this, that's really hard. Here you can see my basic setup, and if you have any questions, let me know. It was a pleasure painting Special Agent Seely Booth.